so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We start out the day like we usually do, looking at the FTSE and then also the German DAX, which I posted into the room. As you can see, they're in a shorter-term downtrend here uh, from yesterday, much like we've seen in our stock market. And I will go to that one next because I think it's an important thing to pay attention to. Here is the, uh, the NASDAQ. This is the leader of the pack, of course. You'll notice uh, yesterday's low was an exact 61% retracement. Uh, you'll see that, I mean, right to the tick, right down there at 1,600. Exactly the number was 11,590. Last night, the 382 was forecast to come in at 11,750. The high was 11,752. We broke about 80 handles since then, so that's an important spot to look at. So if we go below that, 11,590, that's going to set up a move uh, down to the 14,000 level. Uh, of course, if we get above 11,750, that'll change the whole scenario, but that's what it's looking at uh, right now. I have a, a, a couple of announcements. One is our guest today hopefully will be Stan Harley. We're having a little bit of difficulty right now getting in touch with him, but he's due to come on today. Uh, Thursday, we're going to have Tom Hugard, Trader Tom, is going to be here telling us why the best loser wins. And then on Friday, we have Tom's mentor and our good friend David Paul from VectorVest will be on as our guest. So we got some really good guests this week, as we usually do. So I, I think that's important. Folks, there's a stock out here that is very, very popular that is in really big trouble. I'm going to bring it up here. I don't do stocks very much. But I've been watching this one because I happen to know some people that were very instrumental in running this company 30 years ago. And uh, they have since retired. A couple of them have moved on to the big trading place in the sky. But I've known them for a long time. And the stock is right here. If we'll take a quick look at it. It's Intel, folks. This is the stock price today. We've made a 50% retracement. They've noticed, came out, that uh, they have sold a part of their uh, division uh, for $9 billion, which is a substantial amount. Folks, the <laughs> believe it or not, folks, th this stock is acting exactly like General Electric was. General Electric, I know that uh, Jack Welch, you know, got a lot of play for all the work that he did with General Electric. What they forget, what they forgot to talk about was the fact that he destroyed the company. And then when the other guy took over, they started selling off units to keep the, you know, the, the cost down. And they were selling off the, the, the really good units. And that's what's happening to, to Intel here. First of all, they're way behind AMD and way behind Huawei and all these other places that are making these discs, from what I understand, or chips or whatever it is that they make. So you pay attention to this. This is not a very good acting stock. Look at the high today is equal to the low that we made back on, on June 22nd down there at uh, at uh, 57 and change or something you know that's not a, that's not a very good sign and you got a perfect gartley there you got an abcd so this market is is set up to be sold not bought and uh, you know it doesn't have and when they start selling off units that's not a that's not a good thing you know if you remember one of the greatest examples of that ever was i think in 1921 or something like that the boston red sox sold a big bambino babe ruth to the new york yankees for a hundred thousand dollars that was equivalent to a lot of money back in those days and look uh, look what happened to that so uh, remember and that's just like if when you're trading if you get a margin call for god's sakes sell the things that are hurting you don't sell the things that are making you money you know that's a that's silly that's right out of the book by uh jesse livermore you know that's that's very very important to remember to do that so let's keep uh 
let's keep that in mind that uh, it does look bad that Intel does look bad I it just doesn't look very good at all it's uh, I uh, happen to know some people that were heavily involved with that Sandy Lerner was one of them she was one of the accounts for Eddie Horowitz whose birthday was yesterday and anyway we want to get moving on here to a um, couple of things that I wanted to share with you from Andy Pincoli over in, in the UK has sent a chart out that uh, shows the Andrews lines here that uh, look very interesting. Now, we don't use Andrews lines, but we use ABCDs. And as you can see, the meridian line there, if you split that into the ABCD, that gives you your high up there at uh, 35 uh, 3550 and now we're you know we're starting to move in the downside the fact that we're sloping down here in October is a negative sign and as you can see the target on this is 3200 if it could continues to go like this now remember we use ABCD patterns and you know ratios to determine what our our uh, uh, profit objectives are but that's what we're watching here today the key level of course is the Nasdaq today 11,750 if we get above that you know we're off to the races to the upside and we have to get above it substantially folks because it hit it four times that was a 382 retracement and then on the downside uh, if we break below that 15,900 look out below because that tells us we're going to go down to 14,400 now that's just my uh, uh, guess you know it's an approximation I guess what you'd want to say but that's uh, what we're you know keeping a very very close eye out uh, today on that if you have any questions and right now it's really difficult to get through but it's 877-927-6648 it's been so busy folks that Al had to change all of the green bulbs on his incoming call line. I mean, that means he was absolutely busy. Folks, you know, one of the reasons why I like TFNN is because all the smart people that are around here and the, the people that uh, Tom brings in is really great. But I, I love to hear Basil Chapman. He's uh, just a tad younger than me, but uh, he's got a lot of great information. And one of the things he talks about is skyscrapers and, and stuff like that. And, you know, and I, I want to bring up something. You wonder why stocks are where they are? Let, let me show you this. This is what Bill Meridian talked about. This is this uh, chart of uh, – it's a Mark Rothko. It's a black on maroon. As you can see here, it's incredible. Uh, you know, it's just absolutely incredible. It's a black on maroon. It's one of my absolute favorites. Now, the estimate is between 25 and $35 million. That's M, folks, million dollars. It's already bid at $40 million. In other words, it's already $5 million above the highest bid. And why not? Look at this. This is the most spectacular painting. This, pa this passes up the Mona Lisa and uh, the new Da Vinci painting. Give me a break. This is incredible. I mean, my goodness. This makes Jackson Pollard's look like a, uh, like a crayon. I mean, we, we should get together and, and raise our money. And, and and buy it buy it as a thing, and we could put it in the TFN office there in St. Petersburg. I mean, I and that what an investment that will be. I mean, have you ever seen anything so spectacular? I had a 20 minute conversation with John Jameson about this. Who this, he loves this kind of stuff, but to me that I, I I must have missed the whole boat like I did on everything else. But we'll see. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I think I posted the uh, – yes, I did. I posted the uh, poll that uh, Tom Hugard ran today in his trader room, and as you can see, it's overwhelming that the Mr. Republican was going to lose to Mr. Democrat, and so that pretty much uh, settles that score. But there was only 895 votes, and they come from the U.K. and other parts of Europe where they don't vote over here, so I don't know if that means anything or not. Now, getting off the uh, – election stuff for a little bit. We had a, a request to take a look at copper, and I believe copper uh, is getting ready to uh, make some type of a correction here. As you can see right up here at this 113, excuse me, <clears throat> 313 and change level. It is uh, very, very important. Remember once we went above that 310, we talked about that that said it was probably going to go higher. And now we're setting up here at the 1.618 expansion at 13, 13 and a half. Golly, gee, Larry, it's not 13, it's three. Three, 13 and a half. Three dollars and 13 and a half cents per pound. If it gets to 13, 14 and a half, you're wrong. So you've got to risk about $250 to see if you're right. But that is a flat out perfect ABCD pattern. And that's one of the ones that, uh, you know, we really like to uh, pay close attention to. I'll, I'll, I just draw it. I just drew it in so you can see it again here. You'll be able to take a look at it. But that's what you're looking at. Folks, I'm working with uh, Tommy O'Brien here at TFNN to uh, increase our 24-7 service to make it much, much better so that you get it instantaneously. This would allow me to uh, put more trades on because I'm more risk-averse than, uh, than I am profit-oriented. And uh, it really, really helps because you can get into a market, and when you start to see it move, if you try to send it out by email, you might be half an hour or an hour before you get it. But this way, we're working on something that's going to be instantaneous, almost like Twitter. And uh, so we're going to see if uh, if that that'll help. But I, we're really working towards that, and I'm looking forward. I'll be able to use, you know, my AI on something like that too, which would be something that could be pretty good, interesting too. So we'll we'll take a take a little bit of a look at that so, to see if that helps or not. But anyway, those are just a few of the things that we're we're looking at here uh, here this morning. Um, the uh, 
getting back to uh, the markets, uh, we got to remember to pay close attention to these Treasury bonds, folks. We're trading around 170. 324. Uh, the low's been 173.21. The low on the contract is 173.10. It's really important we don't go below that because if we do, we're looking at something that's going to be quite ominous to the downside. And that is not going to be good. It might not last very long, but they're talking to us all the time about, you know, the negative interest rates. And negative interest rates just aren't happening, boys and girls. You know, that's something that you got to pay, uh, you know, really close attention to us. Now, uh, I wanted to show one other thing that Rich Anderson was nice enough to send us. He's got two charts here because he follows everything under the sun. I don't know how he can read as much as he does. But here's a chart showing that um, last week was the biggest. Uh, the last three weeks have been the three busiest buying weeks in like forever, it says there. In other words, $47 billion worth of index funds went into this stuff here. Now, if they did that, they're in trouble because they're underwater now. Because we're down now. This is the fifth day we've been down in the NASDAQ. So that's not a very good sign. If everybody's buying, you know, folks, there's a little, little, little trick here. I'm going to tell you here that uh, if uh, you have a buyer, that means you have to have also a seller. So the buyers and the sellers are much different fellers. So just remember that every time you see a buyer, you got to be a seller. So that's why it's important. Somebody was out there selling now. Do the little guys sell into new highs like that? Not very often. Okay, Marshall's saying that there was 875 Democrats polling on that thing from the U.K., but we'll see whether it means too much or not. I don't know. Um, uh, Mr. Z is saying the uh, the NASDAQ, uh, yeah, it, well, would it be a buy at 10,300? Yeah, oh, yeah, well, the, you're talking, hey, Mr. Z, you're talking, you're talking, you know how many handles you're talking there? You're talking. Uh, it's trading at sixteen thousand. I mean, that's uh, that's six thousand. That's a lot of money, Mr. Z. That's six. That, that's uh, six. That's twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, it could certainly go there, but that's not going to go there today. What we're looking at here is a potential buy at fourteen thousand four hundred, Mr. Z. That's uh, that's that's what we're watching here. Take a look at this. Just let's just walk us through here this right now because this is what was doing last night. Okay, now. When you're looking at this, uh, there was a 382 at 17,050, right? 11,750. We're now at 16,060. That's a little below the 61% retracement of that whole move from the low last night. Uh, right after the market closed, we got down to the 11,600. We rallied up 150 handles. And then now we're coming back down again. If we get below that, you know, you just have to drop the ABCD structure and you're going to be looking at that 13,000, well, 14,050, 11,450 first and then uh, 11,300. But uh, I think you made a mistake there at 10,030. I mean, that would be something like after the election. I don't know. And the, the other thing you've got to remember here, folks, I mean, I don't <laughs> – one of my friends is really into this stuff, and he tells me some of the things that the people don't realize. And one is, you know, they talk about Pennsylvania as being the key to the whole election. Well, Mr. Obama is going to be there this week. That will help the uh, the uh, challenger. But the, uh, the thing that you have to remember that, you know, Mr. Trump only won Pennsylvania by 11,000, uh, 40, yeah, by 44,000 votes in 2016. That's 44,000 votes. But since 2016, there's been some gun registrations in the state of Philad, uh, in the state of Pennsylvania, to the tune of 284,000. You know, gun owners, as we know, the most of those are, uh, you know, are Democrats. So he's he's going to, you know, Mr. Biden is going to sweep Pennsylvania like it didn't even exist with all those new people coming in. So that's another thing. And you've got these huge lines out here. And the we know that the Democrats, you know, do a better ground game than the Republicans. And so it's, it looks pretty bad here for uh, the incumbent. But we'll have to wait and see. It'll be interesting on uh, election night, that's for sure, because there'll be a lot of volatility. I don't know if you folks remember, but back in 2016, you know, the market was limit down. We were down 800 points in the Dow Jones right after he supposedly lost Florida, which was a mistake. Uh, they had misappropriated that somehow. And then, uh, you know, that's basically, uh, that's basically it. So we'll see. Anyway, that's a uh, 
that's a, either here or there. Hey, we, hey, we're going to exist no matter what. But, uh, folks, I've never seen news like it is. The fact that this guy from CNN, that attorney for CNN, whew, boy, you talk about uh, pushing himself to suicide. That that was the most embarrassing thing I think I've seen on TV uh, for a long time. And then, I mean, and then, oh, dear, I mean, it's just, just amazing what's going on here uh, in politics. I'll tell you, it just really, really surprised me. But, uh, oh, dear, who knows? We'll be able to move back and see what's happening here. Okay, yes, as we live in interesting times, which is a, a Chinese curse. You know, folks, I, I thought that was a blessing up until I married Sarah, and she told me that, you know, living interesting times was a Chinese curse. And uh, sure enough, and uh, I've lived in interesting times, and it's not a curse. We'll be right back, 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Stan the Man Harley on the line. Good morning, Larry. How are you doing? Good morning. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. How's the weather out there? Pretty good? Uh, it's nice. It's very nice, good. indeed. It's a little on the cool side compared to Arizona, but that's okay. 
Stan, the question that we have, I posted the first chart, which is your prediction for the low in September. And believe me, I uh, can tell you with a great deal of happiness that people that followed that uh, result and were very, very happy. We That's why I've asked you to come on earlier this, uh, this time because of the fact that that thing was so spot on. So do you want to talk a little bit? Uh, you, you might not know this, uh, Stan, but there's going to be an election here on November the 3rd. I don't know if you people back east follow it much, but there's going to be an election. Do you, do you see any volatility coming into the election? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I was unaware of that. <laughs> Tell us what you're looking at, my friend. Um, Larry, uh, this is a chart of the S&P 500 during current through yesterday's close. And uh, what I've done here is I've looked at uh, – both Fibonacci as well as Lucas relationships from uh, the high-low pivot points going back to the February high of earlier this year. And, and I find if I, uh, if I double the Fib and the Lucas numbers, uh, it's just as good, if, if not better, than the raw numbers themselves. And what I've done here is I have projected from the February 19th high a, a doubling of the Lucas counts. And as one can see, uh, they line up uh, beautifully with the uh, with we, with each of the lows. For example, 58 trading days from that high lined up uh, with the May 14th low, 94, which is uh, two times 47, uh, lined up with the June 29th low, and then exactly 152 uh, trading days after the Feb 19th high lined up with the low we saw in September. Uh, continuing with that, if I uh, take the Feb number 89 double it uh, while well, it lines up uh, with the November 3rd within a day or so. Um, so putting it all together, um, I think uh, the evidence is very compelling for a high here uh, very, very shortly uh, within about two weeks. I've been been pounding the table on that. I, I think uh, I think we're, we're setting up for what could be a very important pivotal high. The fact that there's an election is uh, interesting. But as a technician, it's coincidental in my book. Um, the markets are not going to change because of the election. They're going to change because of the cycles and the Fibonacci relationships that I'm tracking. When I put it all together, looking at the big picture, some of the things that you've talked, you and I have talked about on air here, looking at yearly data going back hundreds of years, monthly, weekly, and now daily data, everything I'm looking at clusters around November the 3rd, which coincidentally happens to be the election day you just referred to. Holy cow. Boy, that's amazing. Uh, Stan, the question that I have is, uh, you know, do you ever looked at these decentennial cycles, you know, with ending in zero and stuff like that uh, to see if there's any long term implications with these? I know Larry Williams has done a lot of work with that, but I just wondered if you've ever done anything, you know, like Gann did stuff to, you know, uh, markets ending in zero. But uh, I, I, I'm so short term oriented, that's way beyond my pay grade. Have you ever looked at anything? In that area, Larry, I have looked at that. I'm not sure uh, I would put any trades based on that. Uh, it's interesting to know. Um, I always am fond of saying correlation doesn't equal causation. Um, yeah, one one can put all that stuff in the sifter and, and shake it and, and come out with statistical averages, but by and of itself, I don't think it's good enough to invest on. Um, uh -huh. I prefer using dynamic cycles. That, that's my preference, and others might disagree, but that, that's the way I approach these things. Okay, that makes pretty good sense. Uh, Stan, the, one of the questions that one of our listeners is uh, interested in is, how, how do you handle uh, going into an election? Do you wait for the election results to, to put on a trade, or do you go into the election uh, long or short? Uh, do you, can you explain to the folks how you strategize this? Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, I am uh, I'm looking for a high here very, very shortly, right around the election time frame. And uh, what I would do uh, is wait to see the market confirm. That is to say, I want to see the market roll over and head south. And while uh, I might miss a little bit off the top end, that's OK. I want to see the trend develop and then get on board. My, my thinking, Larry, is if I get a good slice out of the out of the trend that uh, that that develops, then then I'm doing pretty well. To, to have expectations of getting the top tick and the bottom tick are, are, are yeah. a little bit unrealistic. I, yeah. My preference is not to lead, but to wait and see evidence oh. of the trend developing in the opposite direction, and then get on board. 
and wow. uh, and that's I very, like, uh, that's really that's really really good. Uh, he's, fond of, he's fond of saying uh, buy red bars and sell green bars. Uh, I think that's very good advice. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, as you know, the highs and lows are reserved for our for the people uh, that follow me. You know, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> that's a little joke, Stan. Uh, I did hit one of those once, but uh, it was an accident back in 1912. I, I've done I caught, it too. I've yeah, I caught a canola something. move. <laughs> once in my life. <laughs> yeah, that's probably one one more than I needed, I guess. Uh, one other question that one of our listeners is is asking is, uh, what is the? Did you have a uh, an average risk amount that you're looking at when you're say you're trading the S and P trading here at thirty four thirty seven, and you're looking at a larger cycle? Do you risk like something like twenty handles, you know, thousand or fifteen hundred or five hundred dollars? How do you determine what the risk is when you when you look for a position to enter? That's a good question, and I'm not sure I can succinctly answer that for everyone because everyone has a different bankroll, a different risk tolerance. Um, one has to look at uh, his or her own special situation and define some risk parameters in advance. I, I can't. I can't okay. specify good. one size. That's, fits that's all. fair I'm enough. Just... I know. I know it's really difficult when you do a letter too, because you're doing it, you know, three or four days before the event happens, and you got to give them an area of what to look at. Like you're looking at November third. Well, we could be at new high at that time, or we could be at a, at a major low at that time. That's going to make a big difference on how much you risk and whether it's going to be long or short. Is that correct? That 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 that's correct. Um, and I, I'd also point out the markets are kind of uh, floundering here uh, just below the September 2nd high. Um, I think uh, – oh, and I would also point out that something that was not mentioned in the financial media, the Dow Jones Transports just a couple of days ago uh, made a new all-time high. Wow. Uh, that, you know, and I mentioned it, interestingly enough. Well, um, not only – it, it, I don't know if you want to do that now or after the break, but I thought that uh, would be uh, – Thing, uh, that we should yeah. probably discuss I, as well. I would definitely yeah. like to talk about that because to me that is really an amazing statistic because of the fact I know it's mainly mainly FedEx and UPS, but uh, I mean to see that the, uh, the the transportations you know do something like that with the fundamentals the fact that you know uh, unemployment of 10 million and you know many people that are that are on you know, unemployment and stuff to see the transportations make new highs. Uh, and that, that's not an easy task. That takes a lot of buying, doesn't it? Indeed. It yeah, does indeed. So that, that, is, that is an incredible. Well, we've got to have to take a break here in just a couple of minutes. Stan, is there any one book that you would recommend the folks to get started with with Cycles? That's another question someone's just asked us here. Well, I'm a big, big fan of the Hearst book, which came out many years ago, but that's going to be difficult to find. The Profit Magic of Stock Transaction Timing by GM Hearst. Yeah. That was my Bible. Um, yeah. Way back when. Yeah, I remember. Hey, stay with us. Stan Harley at the Harley Market Letter. We'll be right back, folks. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. 
An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Stan Harley, and we were chatting about the Hearst book, The Profit Magic of Stock Transaction Timing. I don't know if you know this or not, Stan, but Jim Hearst was my customer at Drexel Burnham. You know, I met him when uh, they were doing that uh, compu, uh, what was it, uh, cycle thing. I can't even remember the name of it. It's uh, been so long ago, <laughs> 1969 and 70, when he first came out with the book. Uh, what was it? Cyclotech. Cyclotech was the, name, uh, the start of it. And I got heavily involved with that. And uh, he started an account with me in 76. And uh, this was when he was still an engineer right before he retired, and we bought some gold and stuff. And he moved up to uh, Grass Valley in Nevada City, you know, right there on the border between California and Arizona, uh, California and Nevada, yeah. because he, he loved to trout fish. And one of my good customers for Drexel was Clint Walker, you know, the actor that played uh, Cheyenne Bodie. Uh, he was he was my neighbor there in Westlake Village, and so I knew him. And so I went up to visit uh, Jim Hurst uh, with uh, – at Dobson, and uh, the uh, I ran into uh, to uh, Clint, and uh, he he lived to be 92 years old, but uh, he couldn't recognize him. You know, he was a monster of a man, and uh, he had really sort of shriveled up. But he lived a good life, and he was also a avid fisher, a fisherman, and uh, and hunter. So that's why they lived up in that area. I'm, I'm sorry to take your time away, my friend. Please go ahead. Let's talk about the transportations again. Well, they just went to a, a new all-time high, as I was pointing out, uh -huh. and that would suggest uh, that uh, new highs for the Dow and the S&P are forthcoming. Um, I brought a second chart today, and we could flip over to that. I think that might be uh, highly uh, interesting okay. for, the, for the viewers. <clears throat> this uh, second chart that's going to be coming up here momentarily is actually a four-hour chart, i.e. Uh -huh. it's a half day. And I found something very interesting. When I look at the pattern from the September 2nd high, looking at increments of four hours, half days, uh, and count Fibonacci numbers from each of the highs and lows from the September 2nd high, they all, there it is, they all cluster right at the closing hour on November 3rd. So for example, 89 bars, i.e. 89 four-hour bars from the September 2nd high, 55 four-hour bars from the September 24th low, 34 four-hour bars from the high that occurred on October the 12th. And then from uh, yesterday's low, if we count forward 21 bars, uh, when I put all those in, the, those in the sifter and give them a good shake, Larry, they cluster right at the closing hour, November 3rd. So wow. what this tells me is, uh, is we need to be highly vigilant for a potential trend change uh, right at the close of trading, plus or minus, uh, November 3rd, and that's what I'm watching for. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a high, and uh -huh. my guess is the markets are up, they're up modestly right now, but what we're really waiting for 
is uh, for Congress and the Prez to come out with some kind of a stimulus package. Once that's announced that, that that's passed and signed, uh, then then I think the markets pop and we take out the September 2nd high. That's my thinking at the moment. That may or may not happen. <laughs> that, that would well, be the, the fundamental event that would kind of coincide with my theory about a high in the vicinity of November 3rd. Um, okay. Whether we take out the September 2nd high or not, or whether there are divergences among the various indices, uh, that remains to play out. But uh, my sense at this time that the technical underpinning supports some type of meaningful pivot right in the vicinity of Election Day. Wow. Well, Stan, I have some very good news for you. Are you ready? Yes, sir. You are still going to be one of our most valued guests, whether anything happens on November 3rd or not. So please be coming back with us soon, okay? Well, <laughs> we'll thank have you. you on, we'll, have you on, we'll have you on as soon as the election is over as possible. How about I schedule you for November 4th right now? Would you be able to do that? Yeah, <laughs> That's assuming that we're all going to still be here. We'll have you back <laughs> on Wednesday, November 4th. Let's see, Stan, and we gave the predict prediction and everything. So this might be your last show. Oh, Stan, so yeah, be prepared. Be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, my friend, I want you to take it easy, be safe, and we will have you on again November 4th, and we'll have a short session with you. It might be longer than, than you might like, but if it's everything lines up, it'll be some great information, and we certainly want to have you back because, you know, we have you on, and, you know, I, I keep these charts, and people ask me to repost them all the time, which I do, because it's amazing how accurate you've been. I mean, it's uh, – you know, I can see why you're listed in the Timer Digest all the time because uh, this stuff works. And I have one other question here, and someone says, "Gee, this guy must do a lot of math." And I, as I recall, you're an engineer. Is that is that correct? I, I am. My undergraduate degree is in aerospace engineering. Oh wow, that has to do with planes, I bet, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, listen, I'm going to let you go, pal. But thank you so much uh, for being on. We'll have you on November 4th, okay? Thank you again, Larry. My pleasure. I look forward to it. And don't forget to vote early and vote often. All right, folks. Stan Harley, folks, of the Harley Market Letter. I want to get back to just a little bit more here. I have a, a great uh, human interest story. We were talking about uh, Jim Hurst and the fact that I happen to know him. And then also I happen to know Clint Walker. He lived in Westlake Village. He lived four doors down from me. He was a big movie star, and this was in the uh, late 60s, 69, 70. He, he lived there for about four years. And a very, very nice fellow, really, really quiet. And uh, everybody in the neighborhood uh, really you know, really liked him and everything. But the funny part of it is uh, in Westlake Village, uh, all the homes were backed up against a green belt, which had a beautiful pool complex and exercise complex. Each of the homes, you could walk out your back door across the green belt. The kids would be out there playing all the time. And you could literally have this huge swim Olympic sized swimming pool that had a lifeguard and everything. And, but when Clint Walker would, would go to the pool, folks, he was six foot six. His chest was 54 inches and his his uh, his waist was like 36 inches. He was a massive man. I mean, just unbelievable. And uh, he was never uh, much into athletics. He just happened to have a, one of those gifted bodies. Uh, well, he and I were so alike in that way that uh, we became very good friends because you could hardly see us different at the pool. I mean, you had to look twice to see. Even though I was shorter, we had the same body type. No, wait, my waist was 54 and my chest was 32. That's what it was. Anyway, he was a really nice guy. And anyway, that's it. Yes, I knew Jack LaLanne very, very much uh, from uh, the days up in uh, Avila Beach. He was a good friend of John Raffoni, and I uh, got to know Jack and Elaine uh, quite a bit. And Jack, I have to tell you this story. Uh, it was July 4th, 1986. This was before I started to write the book with uh, Dr. Miller. My daughter came up to visit me because I'd just been there about a year. So she came up and she knew John ever since she was a she was a baby. So she came up for July 4th. We had a big party there with salmon and you know tri-tips and all the stuff. And I saw her sitting under the uh, the uh, uh, the porch uh, visiting with Jack LaLanne. And she stayed there for about two hours chatting with him. And she came up to me later. She said, Dad, she said, you got to you got to pay attention to this guy. And I said, J I said, Jilly, I said, he's one of my friends. He says, yes, but he does all the kind of stuff that you do. And I says, yeah, I know. You mean the positive thinking? She says, yeah. And I said, well, you've been you've been involved in your whole life with that. She says, yeah, but that he's famous. She says, you're not. <laughs> Anyway, he was really instrumental about getting her uh, to go to college and to become a uh, uh, psychologist, which she did, and she has a very big practice now. 
which is uh, really nice. But he was a super nice guy. He just uh, – I never met anybody that just didn't really like he and his wife. They never had any children. They both lived very long, into their 90s. They lived in Morro Bay. They lived about three blocks from where 20, 20 men lives right now. So we'll be back, 877-927-6648. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that will take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back. Uh, the key number to watch today, of course, is the uh, watch the NASDAQ. That's the one that's the most important. On the downside, the number is 11,660. That's 60 handles from where we are right now. On the upside, it's 11,755. That's 100 handles from where we are right now. It's a pretty wide range, but we live in interesting times, as they say here at TFNN, and we can certainly uh, go either direction and maybe even do it both in the same day. So uh, pay very, very close attention to that, you know, I think because these numbers are going to get better and better. Remember what Stan said about November the 3rd? It makes a great deal of sense. The thing is, November 3rd, we're going to be closed, and the election results are going to come out and then you know what's going to happen after that uh, you know h is going to break loose and uh we'll have to uh pay uh, very very close attention to that but uh, we'll we'll keep a close eye on it for sure 
and uh, give us an idea of where we stand. Remember, tomorrow we're going to have a free day. Uh, we'll have Tom Hugard on Thursday, and we'll have David Paul on Friday. Both of them have a great deal of information going on. I didn't get a chance to cover the cattle and the hogs, uh, Ruby, but I really believe that uh, that that is probably the case. Uh, we were looking at that potentially in the uh, in the market, but I, if you look at the newsletter for futures, you'll see that that's what we were looking for. Ruby uh, in the hogs was a market that was getting ready to most probably top. Let's get this up here. So hopefully I'll be able to pull it up and see it, and you'll be able to see we were way up in that zone here that we were looking at around that one that seventy dollar area in the thing remember we were down there at 48 dollars back in july and august that's when mr z was in the room and along with uh, uh rich anderson screaming that this was probably a good buy because it was right near the cost of production and now we're you know we're we damn near doubled in price and look where we are that's quite a bit so we're going to see you know that how that comes up uh, for tomorrow uh, we will have a free day remember the number to call in 877-927-6648 hopefully al will get those green lights fixed on the board because you lit it up today 